Broadcasting from the Any Hour Services Podcast Studios, I'm your host, Mike Wilson, and on this episode in the house, we're going to be talking about what makes a furnace or an air conditioner high efficient. Let's go. All those times that I would dance because I was hearing this music in my head, I just find it very satisfying now that when the music is playing, you guys sit and dance. <laughs> yeah, we kind of felt left out before. I, I felt judged. And I probably would have judged someone that was just sitting there dancing to themselves. You were judged. All right. Well, In the House is a podcast about the major systems in the house, electrical, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. I've got Kevin and Richard back with us today. They're managers over the HVAC uh, install department, service department, tune-up department at Any Hour Services. They know what they're talking about. You're going to want to listen to them. For those watching the show on Facebook or YouTube, I'm curious, if this is your first episode uh, that you've ever heard? Like, did you stumble across this down in the comments? Let me know if you're a first timer or if you're a return viewer. I'm curious. Have you guys ever been to, uh, like the gas station and experienced like you go and you're just buying your soda or your whatever. And they try and like, Oh, do you want a donut too? Have you thought about buying this is like get have they ever tried to like upsell you at the gas station have you ever experienced that i don't think at the gas station uh, yeah, they I have. Say, usually like fast food they're like would you like to add a cookie <laughs> they, they, do i look like i want to add a cookie yeah take actually three. that's probably <laughs> <laughs> don't ask the question you don't want the answer I've to been with kevin and he says yes i want uh, the cookie Shh, <laughs> quiet well i'm i go to i go to holiday locally and they like pretty much every time it's got to be standard practice they're like would you like a delicious donut to go with that and they they, they try to get funny like this this morning i don't know like what was going on but they were like telling jokes and i didn't really like do you know why i didn't laugh at the uh cashier's joke because it wasn't funny it just didn't register with me no <laughs> Bing! there you go <laughs> All right. I, I have to look over well at Austin played. to see if he was impressed. Like, uh, like, oh, didn't see that coming. Austin seems like he's laughing over there. Curveball. <laughs> Curveball. <laughs> All right. Um, so, okay. So we're talking about what makes a system high efficient. And I think high efficiency, like, you know, that's kind of, it's not a buzzword, but you get high efficient appliances, high efficiency washer and dryers. And I don't even know if people know that high efficiency equipment is available when it comes to their furnace and air conditioner, but let's talk about the difference. Well, first, what is efficiency when it comes to um, your heating and cooling equipment? What does it mean? Well, on your furnace, it depends. It's how much it costs to heat your house. The higher efficiency is going to cost less. For example, if you have an 80% furnace, which is your standard basic furnace, every dollar you spend, 80%, 80 cents heats your house and 20 cents goes out the roof. Now, high efficient, 90 cents goes into your house and 10%, 10 cents goes out the exhaust. So 80%, is that the lowest yes. efficiency that's, yeah. and is that the, is there a, another, like is 90 considered high efficient? Yes. Um, is there anything in between that? Like, is it just, you either get a 80% or you start bumping into high efficient? No, equipment? you're going to get an 80, 80%. I mean, you can get a two stage 80, but it might be a little more efficient, but you're not going to. Gotcha. Um, so efficiency when it comes to furnaces is determined by, uh, percentages. Yes. You're not going to have a high efficient 80%. Gotcha. It's going to be 90% or above. Okay. How high does it go when it comes to efficiency? So 90 is like, you know, there, but does it get more efficient than 90%? 98%. 98% is yes. as high as it goes. Mm. That sounds pretty high. It is. <laughs> um, will they ever come out with a hundred percent efficient no, i don't know how you could with the flame like it's got to mm. be as a byproduct I ventless <laughs> yeah but still they have vent ventless fireplaces yeah those those are not a good thing here like there's <laughs> just yeah anyway <laughs> no no i don't i don't see it happening okay uh air conditioners then like you explained uh furnaces are measured in uh percentages how are um air conditioners measured as far as efficiency goes so they, they give them a, a rating. It's a SEER rating, uh, Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio. It's mm -hmm. an acronym. Um, essentially, what they do is they take the ACs, they put them in a whole bunch, have them run and test them under different conditions. And uh, the one thing that they don't tell you is the SEER rating. Basically, it's what the efficiency level that it will run at um, when it's got like perfect conditions, right? Um, they do a couple of other ratings as well, an EER 
um, which is a energy efficiency ratio. They actually put it under a lot harder stress stresses in different environments and stuff. But the most common thing that people hear is the SEER rating. And so that's the, the level. The higher the number, the more efficient the unit. So what is, uh, what's kind of the base? I know because back in the day, they used to be, you know, very like low numbers. Oh, yeah. When I got into this, 10 SEER was the lowest rating we could install. That was the lowest you could install. Yes. But when you were out in the field, how low were you coming across? How uh, low did they go? I, I saw some old units. I don't know. I never found like a rating how, plate. How efficient is this thing? <laughs> not very efficient. I don't know. That's a, that's a furnace, not an air conditioner. Yeah. I know, but <laughs> I don't have an old air conditioner well, sitting next to me. Well, it's going to be least lower than 80%. All uh, right. So go ahead, Kevin. I was going to say, honestly, some of these old ones, they could easily be 50 or less. You know, I mean, you, I know I've touched some of the flues when they're running and they really, really are hot. Really? <laughs> so they lose a lot. Yeah. So, um, 13 sear right now is, is that the lowest that you're allowed to install? Yeah. So you've got in our climate. Yes. Yeah. So depending on where you're at in the nation here, where we are, we're, uh, we're at 13. It's kind of mandated by the EPA. Um, they come out every so often with new efficiency regulations for the manufacturers to have to adhere to. And so, um, yeah, that's where we are, but we've been at 13 for, it's been a, quite a few years now. Is it like 2008, yeah, seven, it's been, something like that. It's been a little while. So we're, 13 we're, is considered standard efficiency. Yeah. That's your, that's your base efficiency. Uh, what is considered high efficient? I know, I know anything over 13 is higher <laughs> efficient than 13. You saw you like, coming, Kevin. What is considered high efficiency? You, you know, honestly, I think that it's going to depend on who you talk to, what they consider. If I'm talking if, to the EPA, if you were because you said they determine it. Well, I would probably say that the EPA is going to want to see above a 16. Okay. Uh -huh, 16 or higher. Um, all right. So they, they may even come out. They might, they might even say higher than that, though. You know, I'm thinking about it. 16 they, with as the rebates usually kick in with the. Uh, they call it high, like the high efficient. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, how high do they go? I think they come, have a 27 sear now. Well, now it's a loaded question. Are you talking just your mini, average? Mini splits get pretty dang high. And they get in the 40 sear. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That, that sounds expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not as, exp not as expensive. It's like an electric car. <laughs> yeah. It's not as expensive as you think. If we're, if we're talking though, like a regular, split system that's yeah. going to be in a home furnaces in here with ductwork and ac outside you know 21 sear de depending on the brand each brand does has their own um you know uh sear rating that they'll get up to where carrier dealers carrier gets up to a 21 sear this is why <laughs> when you go out to like talk to homeowners you don't want to get in the weeds of the technical you just want to like they have proven that this is more efficient than this one. And so let's actually Th just. This one will save you money and the, more than what this one will. Yeah. yeah. So my house, I have a 19 sear air conditioner. Okay. And it has five stages. You have okay. a VNA. I do. I do have the VNA nine. Uh, I will get the six done the other system. I don't know what first stage, second stage, third stage, fourth stage. I don't know what that sear rating is. It's, it's not rated at that. I know what my fifth sear is, and that's 19 sear. Does that make sense? That fifth stage, the, the highest the efficient highest, that it gets is 19. No, well, at full capacity, at 100%. So it's kind of like driving your car. Get on the throttle, let's say you get 20 miles a gallon. Now, if you're coasting down the road, they don't rate that, do they? Mm. It's just, here's what you're going to be costing. Well, they, they say highway and Well, street. yeah, but if not coasting, <laughs> that's highway, not coasting. It's true. It's true. So it's kind of the same thing. So... Let's actually talk about what are the technologies, like how do they achieve those higher efficiencies? Let's talk about furnaces first. How do you take a furnace from 80% efficient and get it to be, you know, up above 90% efficient? So a furnace has two, like your 80% just has one heat exchanger. Okay. They got, that gas goes through the one heat exchanger, exchanger, the blower pushes through there and whatever heat's left goes out the exhaust. Now, a high efficient has two heat exchangers. It goes through it twice, essentially. So you're getting twice the heat out of it. Are they stacked on top of each other? Yeah, uh, Yes, they go through one and then it continues on through the other. So they're connected, but one's on top, one's on the bottom. And and typically the secondary heat exchanger is, they're a little bit different than what your primary ones are, like in the 80 percenters. Okay. They'll have aluminum fins on them, right? Yeah. So that they they can dissipate the heat 
more effectively, right? So essentially more of the heat that's passing through there is going to radiate. And the, so when the blower kicks on, it'll carry that off better. So is that just essentially creating a longer path yes. for the air to be mm -hmm. going across and mm -hmm. get hotter? Yep. And so, okay. So does that mean that they can lower the temperature across that distance or do they like raise the temperature? Like, is it, are you, and when I say lower the temperature, meaning like in theory, you can, you can use less, you can burn less gas because you've got a longer distance that you're, that the air is exposed to the heat. Yeah, it's pulling that extra 10% or whatever it is of heat out of the heat exchangers because it's got that longer, the air has more time to go past there. Now the air is still going through there, but again, it's kind of like a longer sure. pipe, so to speak. So then are they achieving that by making a longer heat exchanger or you say it has a second heat exchanger where is that second heat exchanger getting the hot air from it's connected to the primary so is it is it, it just, really just a longer heat yes. exchanger okay gotcha so the all uh, the the heat travels further mm -hmm. and that's what cools off by the time it gets to your exhaust that's cooled off by the time when kevin earlier was talking about that furnace you know it gets hot that flu that means it's losing a lot of heat but now high i see high one you've pulled that heat out of that exhaust and there it's in the house and that's did you see that light bulb turn on no like it's, mike just like oh i see and that's why well, I, was, I was staring off in the distance <laughs> that's why on a lower efficient on an 80 percent, you've got a metal duct uh, the exhaust pipe or yeah sorry the exhaust pipe but on a high higher efficient since the exhaust gases are cooler you can use a pvc pipe and it condenses water and we mm. need that water to run back through the furnace because that metal isn't designed for that. One of the byproducts of combustion, believe it or not, is water. Hmm. And so, yeah, if it's not in an 80% furnace, it's hot enough that that'll just evaporate off and it goes up and out. 95 or 90 whatever plus the high efficient furnaces. When you cool it, that water doesn't evaporate. Exactly. So it has to have a place to go. And so and you don't want it to be rusting anything out. So they're designed to come all the way back, back into the furnace down and into a drain. Gotcha. So is that why it's plastic is because mm -hmm. if it were metal, it would uh, rust out. Yep. Man, you learn something new every day. I, anyone listening? I mean, this is some nuggets that's being dropped. I'm learning some stuff. I hope y'all are learning some stuff. Uh, okay. What, what else? What else? The, besides the secondary heat exchanger, is it called secondary or yeah. second or just a primary and a secondary? Okay. So, um, what are some other things that they do in furnaces to make them more efficient? Or is that pretty much it? Well, that's that's typically your differences between your 80% and your 90%. Okay. Then you start getting into staging. Let's say, you know, I've got so many, oh, this is going to go in the weeds a little bit. And I don't know how to, how else to explain it, but if you okay. got a hundred thousand BTU furnace, but it's, you know, a spring day, it's not that cold that the furnace can low, kick down to a lower stage. So it's only using say 60,000 BTUs still maintain your heat it's burning less gas but still doing the same job so is it is it achieving those fewer btus by um like burning less gas or burning it for shorter amount of time how does it achieve less that? gas and then less it goes gas. through the blower and everything and there's some algorithms and stuff so do the do the orifices like change no just the pressure the amount of gas going the through the going through uh okay this, this is where it gets into the engineering that I don't fully understand all that, nor do I. That, I haven't really looked into yeah, it. Sure. They're, they're set up like everything from the inducer motor that we've talked about in past episodes, the pressure switches. They've got two pressure switches because it has to be able to have a low, everything is lower settings. And so for it to function, they have to have those set up so that it can do it, so it can switch back and forth. The gas valves, they have two separate, uh, call them solenoids for like, yeah sections where it's going to go through so when it's in high stage it'll go through the one that is just the way the pressure is set is going to be set so that it's going lower same orifices those don't change so i think that this uh relates better to your analogy of like pushing the gas down or coasting because are you are you if i'm understanding correctly are you saying that on most 80 we'll just say 80 percent furnaces when it comes on, it's on mm -hmm. and then it's off. Yep. Whereas, and so that's like, you're either pushing the gas on, down or you're high, not. Yep. But with the staging, it has different gears or different, like it'll it'll come on and then it'll like kind of coast a little bit because it doesn't have to 
push the pedal down as hard to maintain mm-hmm. the speed. Now they do make an 80% two stage as well. So you're still getting, yeah. Yeah. But you're and, not going through that secondary heat exchanger. Sure. So it's going to be more efficient. You can use less gas in your house. Are those the, are those the main ways, uh, that they do it with, um, the secondary heat exchanger and the staging? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is there any, efficiency so the staging doesn't have anything to do with the speed of the blower fan it does it does yes mm-hmm. so they'll they'll function in conjunction with each other as well as the conjunction in- function mm-hmm. as well as the inducer motor your exhaust motor typically if you have a lower stage the exhaust motor is on a lower speed mm-hmm. so it keeps that pressure that temperature inside that heat exchanger still so there's a lot of variables in there okay on, on the really high-end furnaces you get into some modulating stuff and um essentially it's it's like a two stage, but it's able to have incremental stages. Where 70 it's, stages. Yeah, where it's it's able to, in itself, come up and down at varying levels mm. and uh, just based upon the need in the house. Gotcha. Carrier's the actually only one that my knowledge will actually ramp down at the same time, but then mm. we're getting into the weeds there. Okay, let's go to air conditioners then. How do they become more efficient? So one of the main ways that they do it, AC, I mean, all of this is airflow, right? Mm-hmm. And if you ever look at like a super high efficient uh, AC unit, a lot of times they get a lot bigger. And the reason they get so much bigger is because they are taking that same refrigerant, passing it through the tubes that longer. are exactly longer and giving it more time to be able to pass air through it. So right? it's like a secondary heat exchanger, the concept but kind you're of, yeah. doing it outside in, with the condensing. In unit. fact, his uh, that VNA nine, they carrier has a, a unit that's they actually made the footprint of it smaller. It's still kind of tall, but it's smaller. And what they did was they double lined, right? I think that I'm Pre- I pretty really... sure they double lined the inside with uh, with their fan or their uh, outdoor oh, coil. Sorry, the outdoor coil, the condensing coils, um, so that it could have that, still have the the length and the heat transfer that mm. needs to happen to still gain that efficiency. You get into the compressor, like what type of compressor is it? And then they also the fan motor outside, mm-hmm. the speed of that trans, you know, goes different speeds to get the efficiency out of gotcha. that. Um, yours, you get into some that are a, uh, inverted technology also, right? A lot of your mini splits, the reason that they end up being so high is cause it's all inverted, you know, inverted sounds like to me, sounds like it's like all a- backwards. <laughs> like if you get into an inverted roll, like, yeah. you know, inverted position when you're flying as that's, that's not necessarily a great thing. Yeah. So, so then let's go there then on mini splits. How, how do they achieve? Like, what does that inversion look like? It just makes it so inversion as <laughs> dirty air. Like it's, <laughs> mini splits don't sound too good. <laughs> Sorry. Keep going. Uh, it's like a power, just a power inverter. You know what I mean? When you, you, you're an electrician, you think about what does a power inverter do, Mm -hmm. right? It's, it's the same kind of thing. They use that kind of technology, but it's, it's all made so that it doesn't have to, uh, so they can disperse what needs to be used in the different areas and just do it more effectively. Mm -hmm. Uh, the one thing that's really nice about those tubes, they're way quieter, way more quiet. How come? Um, I don't know. You get onto lower stages, the way that cuts through the air, the fan. Yes, I love technology. (laughs) We did a, this last summer, we did a nicer inverter system. And I think the customer's like seven, eight feet. He's like, are you going to turn it on? I'm like, it's on. It's running. like, are you serious? He's like, holy cow. So they've got some nice features. It's like if you have by your back patio or by window that it's really noisy. Something like this would be very beneficial. Um, Is there any way to quantify like in a dollar and cents way. I mean, with the furnace, it sounds pretty easy. Like if it's 80% efficient, 80 cents are going towards heating the home. You're losing 20 cents. Like you're wasting 20 cents, you know, for every dollar that you're spending heating the home. And if it's 97, like you're only losing three cents. Is there any equivalent way to like make that correlation on the air conditioner side that you know of? You'd have to look at like the, what you're being charged for your kilowatts or however they charge that and the rate of what it's going to use. So there is a way to figure it out, but it's definitely not worth all the work. Yeah, (laughs) it's, it's pretty complicated. I mean, you can, 
Yeah. It's well, cause, definitely. cause I guess the thing is, is like the question that I get, even from my in-laws, like for, they're like, I'm thinking of going tankless. Is it worth it? I'm like, well, what do you mean worth it? And I think a lot of people, when they ask, is it worth it? They're asking like, is it going to pay for itself? Well, there's, yeah. And that's where there's two different train of thoughts is, are you looking for a return on your investment? Or are you looking for a more comfortable home? Because a higher efficiency furnace and or air conditioner is going to make your house more comfortable because it's going to be more balanced. You know, it's like you're talking about earlier how, you know. You're 80%. It comes on it comes and on, it on, goes off. off. Like, for example, you get one that's staged. It's going to turn on at a lower stage. It's going to run longer, but it's going to cost you less. But it's also going to, the longer they run, the more balanced your house will be because it has time to get to those corner spots. So that's where it's like, when you talk about, is it worth it? It's like, well, do you want a more comfortable home or you want the same comfortable? Like, what are you wanting? Yeah, I, I guess that's what that, that's, that's what I'm getting at is when you ask a, a question, whether you think, is it worth it is a vague question or not, it is a vague question because you have to, you have to define what the worth is, is your, is what's worth it. The, like for me, for tankless, the convenience of never running out of hot water, yeah. you know, that's, that's where I place the worth. Um, but for air conditioner, is it that you want your home to be more comfortable? Is that worth yes. the extra money? Or are you with your return on investment? Are you trying to calculate, okay, I'm going to spend this much less a month over the life of it. It pays for the system. Are you trying to make it a financial transaction type? Yeah, of if thing? you're looking at that, there's some the carrier never has like a generic how much it's going to save you on average in the u.s which we're in utah we're definitely a little different climate with our what we have so but i think that one of the reasons that they that they go that direction to try and get a value is because we know the most expensive part of owning a furnace is actually operating it and and like servicing it and so i think that's people just they just want to know and they're they're curious so tell me like Tell me the difference in, in price. In, well, actually, do you install more standard uh, efficiency systems nowadays or more high efficient systems? You know, it's really all over the poi all, all over the board. I mean, it's we do a lot of standard stuff. We do a lot of high efficient stuff. But I mean, so, is it like 50, 50, 60, 40, 70, 30, um, 10, 90, 80, 20, 85, 15, the, the newer 199. I, I'm just coming up with numbers that add most to newer homes are not, are high efficient. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm this is just me going out on a limb. I'd probably say it's a 60/40. 60 meaning high efficient 60% or um, it may even be more like a 45/55. Well, no one's going to fact check you cuz like we don't have a way to do that. But I mean, I guess you you still do get a lot of people around here who want to go with the 80%. Do you feel like they want to go with the 80% because of the cost? Yeah. The upfront cost, mm -hmm. which is a very real factor. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, there, there have been times in my life where, okay, so they're still happening, where I make decisions <laughs> <laughs> based on that that cost. But like, uh, uh, okay, then let's talk about maybe the difference in the the cost, like uh, an, uh, a standard efficient system compared to a, a high efficient system. The upfront installation and equipment cost. What kind of ranges are we looking at? Oh, geez, <laughs> you you could be as low as you know. Twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars ish on a for base, a standard system. On a basic standard is that just that's just a furnace? Just a furnace. Yeah. Is yeah. air conditioner usually more expensive or less expensive? They have a tendency to run a little bit more. Yeah, they're more money. Mm -hmm. So, so you're looking, you know, to to replace both the furnace and air conditioner with lower end stuff or with standard efficient stuff, maybe six to eight thousand. Is that what you're looking at? Yeah, that's probably fair. Yeah, just depends on what rebates are out there at the manufacturer stuff like that. Sure, you might be able to get some. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying that. Well, like, on standard stuff, you're not going to get too many, but yeah, that's, that's true. True. it'd be more like the promo. If you had a company that was running a promo on something, you know, gotcha. Um, but Buy then, a carrier air conditioner, get a carrier furnace for free, <laughs> <laughs> but you can get into, uh, on the opposite end of that, the super high efficient, uh, modulating, communicating really fancy stuff. Well, before we get to the, like, you can get nuts with it. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's, let's step a little bit and say, okay, you know, you're going to be, Six to eight thousand for a standard efficient it, system. It's common to see somebody in that eight to twelve thousand realm. Okay, so for, then for a full system. Gotcha. So six to eight, eight to twelve is like okay. Now we're stepping up into mm -hmm. this is a little higher efficient, mm -hmm. and then going from there, like how just for the equipment, not 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 talking about like okay, we had to reduct everything. Like what are you looking at as you get into the higher higher efficient things? 
Maybe, geez, I don't know. I th- you're going to be in that. 15? I was going to say more like 18 to 22 in that realm. Is that what the, I don't know. It's, it, a lot depends on the size of the equipment. You know sure. what I mean? Smaller stuff's going to be cheaper. Bigger stuff's going to be more expensive. But it, I mean, it, I've seen it come through where you're, yeah, you could be 18 to 20, oh, yeah. 22, 24, maybe even on some of that big this stuff. This newer stuff that's coming out the six to 26 here and stuff like that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Technology doesn't necessarily always make things cheaper. Right. I yeah. mean, and to get those higher efficient, those engineers, they, they work for their money. They are proud of their stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So I apologize to any engineers that I may have offended in that last comment. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be proud of my stuff. If I like <laughs> could figure out how to like make a hey, system run I, that I much look better. At the, I look at the stuff and I look at the technology and it's amazing. Like who some... was the first dude? The first dude that was like, well, if you calculate the, the cosine of the derivative and the coefficient of the rigor mortis. I think he's making words up now. I was, but like, no, <laughs> like the first guy that figured out like, Hey, Too we much. could make this thing a whole lot more efficient if we just extended the length of the heat exchanger. We, we went from just burning fire and gas in a tin can to what we have now, which is. I don't know. Which is what, Mike? (laughs) (laughs) We still we still pipe gas into a metal cabinet in the basement and light it on fire (laughs) to heat our homes. (laughs) That was a good setup. I like that. That's my favorite way to describe it. (laughs) Always gets a chuckle. Uh, Okay, so so you know, there's there's the range there, and you know, you talk about like when you start getting into those bigger prices. No wonder people are like, well, I just need heat. I'm not in a situation where I'm trying to like you know drop all of this money to, to have it be that mu- much more efficient. So I get that completely. Um, you're paying for comfort, not just heat. Sure. It, it's going to well, be, and there's so many, the reason they have so many different models of furnace and the different abilities that they have is because you've got every different situation out there mm-hmm. and and that's what they do it for, you know, so that you can tailor. And that's what our guys go out and they try to tailor a system to your individual needs, be it just getting the furnace or doing the Cadillac of whatever, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, any other thoughts on high efficient equipment or is that, did we, did we cover that pretty good? You think for the average, are there any other, like when you guys are in the field, uh, presenting options to people or, or like sizing equipment, are there any common questions that you would get that, that, w- that people would benefit listening to? Um, noise. What's the, what's the noise levels? That's a, that's a common question we get. Higher efficient is definitely quieter. Do you think they're asking about noise because the older your equipment gets, the louder it gets, and so they're trying to solve that? Huh? Well, that's part of it. And if they've got like uh, a, an air conditioner that's by the window, they're they're concerned the new one's going to be louder. That's not what they want. Mm-hmm. Or if it's the furnace, you know, is in by their bedroom or something like that. When it turns on, they hear this big blower turn on. <laughs> it's going to be quieter. The higher efficiency because they have sealed doors and stuff like that. Gotcha. Um, one of the other things that. Uh, Older houses, not even older houses. I mean, a lot of new houses still. They're plumbed in with flue for eighty percent furnace. Maybe they stick an eighty percent furnace in, and so when you go to a ninety plus percent furnace, we talked about the pipes, right? The different type of flue, the plastic flue. Those have got to be ran out. The positive thing about them is they can run horizontally and exit out the house horizontally, right? But something to be aware of if you have, if say you go look at your furnace and you see oh, it's an 80% because I've got this metal flue pipe that comes off of it. Well, they're going to have to be able to get some pipes out of the house. Now, it's like I know our guys are super clever, and there's, you know, you know construction, you know houses are built, how they're built. Uh, you can go in and typically find a good way. I've very rarely found houses that you couldn't get flue pipes out without too much difficulty. Right. Um, but you have to be aware that you're going to have that on the outside of your house. And so just stuff to know if you want to get rid of that chase that's on your main level you're doing a remodel you get this little place where you're if you want to get rid of it going high efficient we've done a lot of those like people want to do a remodel open their main free level the, yeah free up the corner yeah. that's been boxed in framed in they want that gone because they're doing a remodel and open turn that wall out like high efficient can do that gotcha so if you're in a situation and you're you're trying to decide what you should do like i mean especially if your system's getting older it, that i i feel the best thing that you can do if your system is over 20 years old, like if your furnace and air conditioner is over 20 years old, 
or 15 years or whatever, like understand, like, I mean, we say it all the time. It's not a matter of if it's going to break down, it's a matter of when. And so if you're pushing that 15, 20 year old age, do yourself a favor and start actually researching, you know, what you, what you want out of a system, like have somebody come out and be like, Hey, I just want to, you know, get a price on, on my system and find out how much it is. Because if those prices that we listed earlier, if you're like, I definitely know I want a higher efficient system because I want to spend less each month on my utilities. I don't want the noise. Like I, I want it to be better for the planet, but I don't have $18,000, you know, to put one of those systems in, have somebody come out, bid it so you can get a price. And then that way you can, you can start saving. I know for us, a lot of times you're not in a situation where unfortunately not everyone like plans ahead that that far and you don't actually think about replacing it until it's not working and it's 100 degrees outside or negative three. And so you're in a situation where you can feel like you're uh, under pressure and that's not that's not the HVAC company's fault, mm -hmm. right? That, that's, that's, that's a situation where, you know, it, it slipped your mind and you didn't do the planning. So start planning. But in those situations, that's one of the reasons that we offer financing is because we know people don't have those thousands. Even there's a lot of people that don't have the, you know, $5,000 sitting around or $3,000 to replace one of the pieces of equipment. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, having that as an option to be able to better serve people to get their homes back up and going, I think is a good thing. One thing to realize too is, you know, we threw out a big range. There are some a lot of great options in that affordable range. 100%. You know, and and so don't be afraid of what it is. Just make sure you do your research, get a good company out there that uh, is going to be able to take care of it and give you the options. Anything else? No. I just like Kevin said, there's a there the range is huge and just depending on what you're looking for. Uh if you're listening to the show right now, I'm curious, don't go cheat in the comments, if you know the efficiency of your system right now, because I'm convinced not a lot of people know what the efficiency of their system is. If you know what it is, let me know, yes, you know, or if you have no clue, let us know that down in the comments. Or if you wanna go look it up, I don't know, leave a comment below. I'm just trying to get you to comment. That's really what I'm trying to do. You can just say hi. I think I might comment. If I Actually, do, you just say bye, because we're about to wrap the show. If I knew how to do technology better, I'd get on and comment. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. Your heart's in the right place. It is. Hopefully Jim knows how to comment. Uh, <laughs> thanks for listening to this episode. We'll be back uh, next Tuesday with another episode of In the House. If you'd like to know more about Any Hour Services, visit anyhourservices.com. I've been your host, Mike Wilson, and you've been listening to In the House. See ya. <laughs>